Good morning, viewers across Trinidad and Tobago and in the wider Caribbean. Thank you for joining us here. This is Book Club Corner, and I am Jewel Green. And every Wednesday on Book Club Corner, right here on Tobago Updates in Scarborough, we talk to local authors. We chat with them about their book, about the love of the literary arts, and the impetus for writing. And we're so happy to have with us today uh, a good friend of mine, right? I've known her for a few years, a real Tobago girl, smart like a whip, newscaster for Tambrin Radio, as well as a former princip vice principal of the Scarborough Secondary School, former Spanish teacher, and she is a leader in the NGO world in Tobago. She is the president of the Rotary Southwest, as well as the secretary for the Kiwanis Club Tobago. And we welcome with us this morning, Miss Anne-Marie Davis. Good morning, <laughs> Joelle, and thank you. It's so lovely to have you here with us. Thank you so much. And she'll be chatting with us about her book, right? She's a co-author of the book, Tobago Imprint, and we'll be chatting about that. But you know how we do it on Book Club Corner. We have to get in some brunch. We have a wine today, and we will be doing the five S's of wine tasting. But let me tell you what we have today. This wine is from Sweet Hand Wines. It is an exotic fruit blend, right? And we are going to be sipping on this <laughs> today i'm so enthused let me tell you i'm smelling it right yes. now so we're going to do the five s's right we're going to see the wine so we see the clarity and this wine is it, it's a, it has good body right when we look at this wine and then we swirl the wine and what we're looking for is the legs the sweetness and this wine i'm seeing some legs here and then we sniff the wine and we sip and we savor. Mm. This really is an exotic fruit blend and it's giving me a little dryness. Yeah, yeah. Gemma, you know I like my dry wine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, really nice. I have to take another sip. Mm -hmm. mm. This is a special one, guys. Gemma, Sweet Hand Wines. And she is obliquely opposite Canaan um, Penny Savers, um, the little blue store right by the Panyard, a local winemaker, a vintner in her own right. She comes up with her own blends. And thank you very much for this, Gemma. And as we start today, we want to talk about your book <laughs> that you co-authored with the other 25 authors, because this is an anthology. Yes. And an anthology is a collection of works. Yep. Okay. And this has a number of short stories and poems to be going print. Guys, get this book. This is a fantastic book to have. It's an especially fantastic book if you are um, in the diaspora, traveling back home, or you have friends and family away. Right? It really is Tobago in print. Right? Literally, the name says it all. And we want to talk to one of the co-authors. We've had um, another co-author here, okay. your compatriot, Maria. Okay. <laughs> I know you all, every year they do the um, hamper drive with yes. the Tobago Writers Guild. Because Anne-Marie is a vice, past vice president of the Guild, as well as she's now a very vibrant member. And you have three poems in here, Anne-Marie. Yeah. And the three poems, um, A Wasted Life. But the one I really, really like is this kindness tree. tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I read it and I said to myself, she has to read this one for us. Did you need your glasses to read this one? No, no, no. I can't okay, read it. because the last the last author we had, she said, Oh my god, you didn't tell me how to read. I have to get my glasses before we start. She's like me, right? Yeah. I cannot I mean I could see, but I can't see. Right, guys? We we know those who know know. So we're going to get into this kindness poem, but I want you to tell us um, about how you became a poet, right? Okay. How long have you been a poet? Did you recognize that you were a poet from early on? Or is it something that gradually grew on you? Okay. Good morning to everyone and good morning to all our listeners and viewers. Um, it actually started when I was in first form in Bishop's High School. Mm. My English teacher, Miss Agnes Marie Thomas, no, Miss Agnes Murray, 
she gave us a poem to write. She told us, just pick a topic and write a poem, and she would grade it for us. So I decided to write a poem entitled Nietzsche. Actually, that's one of that's my first, first official mm -hmm. poem. And I got nine out of ten, which actually was the highest mark. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, I said, I wonder where I lost that one mark. Yeah. You know, and I felt so proud because she let me read it to the class. Oh. And in addition to that, my mom is a published author, or was a published mm. author, God rest her soul. And, you know, she always used to write poems. And I think I got that kind of gene from her, writing mm. poems. I like to, you know, take um, experiences and express it on paper. Because for me, I don't have any set time for writing. Something happens, it affects me deeply, and then I write. Mm -hmm. So I think I got that from my mom. And, you know, so, the so encouragement from my... this is a family my... business. Yes. <laughs> yes. Handed down from mother from to my daughter. Mother, yes. I like that. Listen, get into this family business of writing, you know. It's not only something that is a legacy, it's profitable, yes, but it is something that you, where you leave who you are, what you think about the world, and that's how you feel great. about the world behind for others to read and consume. Definitely. And I think that's really important. Yes. Yeah. So tell me, <laughs> when you wrote this poem called, <laughs> and, <laughs> I have my, my stickies, right? <laughs> I know exactly how to get back to my spot. When you wrote this poem called The Wasted Life, mm -hmm. and I want you to read a few no verses problem. from here. When you wrote this poem called The Wasted Life, I know you're a former teacher, former vice principal yeah. and Spanish teacher. Yeah. Janelle, the host for brunch, she said, <laughs> you know, that's my Spanish teacher. She taught me. <laughs> that was the only time I ever wrote an essay in Spanish. <laughs> right? So as a teacher dealing with youth, this poem, The Wasted Life, did it have any impact on why you wrote this poem? I think it did because, you know, being in the education system, different experiences would impact you from time to time. And you'll have to deal with all kinds of children, the good, the bad, the indifferent, you know, and sometimes you talk to them and, you know, you try to encourage them to do the right thing, go along the right way, but sometimes they just don't take you on. So I think that kind of propelled me to write that poem, mm -hmm. yes. And do you find that this is something that, um, as a former vice principal, as a teacher, You've had to deal with uh, um, on frequently. Is it an infrequent, you know, issue of you know what you would say this wasted life that you know the youth are wasting their life, or do you think it's just you know it's a one-off? It it happens, but it's not something that's the norm. Um, both ways, mm -hmm. you know, you try to get interventions. You try and you know, get counselling for them. There are those who would go along with what is provided. And then again, you have those that would resist no matter what. They would resist, you know, they would come to school, they'll be on the corridors, they would be wasting time. And, you know, sometimes you meet them after school and, you know, they'll come and say, you know, Miss, you know, I really, you know, I really mess up in school that kind yes. of way, you know, I really shall listen to you. And, you know, I might have had my subjects by now. I said, well, it's not too late. You can still try and, you know, oh, get yes. whatever you need to get, you know. But I think we as educators, we need to continue to encourage youth to continue to be on the right path, to do the right thing. You're coming to school for an education. Mm -hmm. Ensure that, you know, when classes are called, you are in place and oh, that yes. you do what is required of you. Because at the end of the day, it would affect you in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. yes. That is so true. Yeah. Let me tell you, well, I had a mother. She was an educator as well. She was a teacher, a former principal of um, a primary school in Trinidad. And she used to pound in her head. I mean, we heard it so often. She used this phrase, and every time I say it, I have to explain it. Yeah. They're here come already, you know. Yeah. She used to say that. No, she used to use that phrase while she was combing our hair, right? right. So, you know, while you're getting your hair plant, yeah. you want to still watch the TV, yes. right? So, yeah, they're spinning and twisting, yeah. and she say, you know, um, you're going to get a mover already if you continue, you know, meaning you, you, the yeah. plant yeah. won't be all over the place. And then she used to say, they're here come already, you know, mind your, your business, business, right? Yes. You are the one whose hair is getting plaid. This That's is for correct. you, so mind your business because they're here come already. And Definitely. I always remember that phrase. And that is something that even as youth, we need to be cognizant of, of, of you know. Course. They're here come already. Yeah. Their business fix. Mm. Everything, their bread buttered, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yes. Everything is well with them. Where are you? Yes. You know? 
Mm. And that's something I think youth um, sometimes don't always realize mm. that they're in a situation where somebody is already where they're going yeah. and you are now trying to get there, yeah, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we would come home and tell her, you know, this teacher did this or she said that, or this teacher doesn't like me. And she said, okay, well, what happened? Mm. And we'd explain, she said, all right, well, it doesn't sound too bad yet. If anything else happens, you know, let me know so I can monitor. But remember, she or he already has their degree, right? <laughs> They're teaching you because they already got there. That's so good. just be able to take the meat off the bone and leave Maybe. the bone, right? <laughs> so, you know, parents, you really need sometimes to guide these students and even educators, you know. I know that sometimes educators... Uh, are dealing with their own stress and issues mm -hmm. and I feel you know they're human beings too mm -hmm. and we have to be able to understand that you know they're not perfect people yes, and nobody's perfect no one is. but when you go to school students out there get your education and all you're getting get your education right yes, we want to make sure you understand that they're here come already a teacher here come already the principal here come already taxi driver here come already the bus driver here comb already. You get your hair comb, right? That's all I'm going to put out there. And Maria, I want us, before we go to um, a break, mm -hmm. just to read a few stanzas from here. No and we're problem. going to go to break and come back when okay. anne is finished reading. No problem. A wasted life, guys. A wasted life. He seemed intent in more ways than one to ignore his parents' plea for they were aware that the part he'd thread would be filled with misery. The advice to reject evil friends fell only on deaf ears. He lived a rather reckless life throughout his teenage years. He abandoned his role as a high school kid, no sense he said it made, and opted for a life of crime of which he wasn't afraid. Until one day, Alas, too late, they got the troubling news. Their son was killed in broad daylight. Soon everyone shared their views. Stealing, killing, and kidnapping, that was his way of life. But how could all his parents' work be blurred by pain and strife? In utter despair, they sought advice to mend their broken son. But still he refused any extra help, regardless of what they'd done. Their only recourse now was to pray. They lived on bended knee and offered up their child to God to be freed from his misery. We're going to stop there, guys. We're going to break. Andrea, your voice is so <laughs> melodious. It's so calming. I could listen to you all day long. You got to do an audiobook. You have to do an audiobook. This is why she's a new caster, guys. You hear that voice? Just sweet, the pronunciation. My goodness. Oh. We're going to break. We'll be back, Anne-Marie, with A Wasted Life, The Kindness Street, to Big Imprint. Get the book, guys. See you in a few minutes. And we're back. Tobago Updates Book Club Corner. We're having a really nice chat with former Vice Principal, President of the Rotary Southwest, Anne-Marie Davis. Get this book, Tobago in Print. It is an anthology of 26 authors. And Anne-Marie, before we went to the break, was giving us a read. <laughs> Anne Marie's voice, it's it's magic. It's she has to do an audiobook. I mean, one of the poems that you have here, because you have three of them, right? Yes. So you have a poem called A Wasted Life, God the Potter, You the Clay, and The Kindness Tree. Mm -hmm. Tell me how many poems do you have in total? I have a total of about forty five poems in all. Forty five. Yeah, about three or four short stories. So we can expect a full book from you soon. <laughs> yes, hopefully. <laughs> Once no, things go to let plan. me tell you, yes. this is a, she is a poet by just, you could tell, it's in your blood, right? We have this kindness tree, and I want you to read from us this kindness tree. And then we want to get into the conversation. We wanna, we're going to be bringing some of these budget conversations in here, what's happening in Tobago, right? Okay. So I want you to, you pick, just one, two, three dots, okay. whichever three you want. Okay. I can't get enough of um, Amory's voice. Okay, the kindness tree. Be kind to all, both big and small. Be kind in word and deed. 
What's needed is a tiny act, small as a mustard seed. You plant this very minute seed in the garden that's called life. You weed it round and tend to it and uproot weeds of strife. You watch it daily blossom now into the kindness tree. And then you pluck a leaf or two and sit right back and see. Both leaves represent kindness, a good deed done someday. It may be offering words of cheer or showing them the way. You pluck more leaves from this great tree and cheer someone who's ill and share with those who are in need and surely do his will. Um, we don't get them every <laughs> Let them buy the book. Yeah. Let them buy the book and get the rest of this poem and the rest in this book. Your voice is just magic, as I said, just smooth. But when I read this poem, mm -hmm. I said to myself, you know, I hear Tobago say a lot, Tobago isn't the Tobago they knew. This Tobago isn't the Tobago they knew. Mm -hmm. And I said, the kindness tree, how apt it would be, you know, if this were to lead us back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that what you have found that Tobago has changed in terms of their kindness, their helpfulness to each other? And this is not a criticism, guys. Please don't come for us. We, we're making observations yeah. here. Yeah? Yes, I, um, I do agree with you. I express the same sentiments because, you know, growing up in Tobago, it was like, you know, a big family. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone knew everybody and everyone would be willing to assist, to help you in your moment of need. You know, your car broke down on the road. You know, you are sure that once you pop your bonnet, you are sure that someone yes. would stop and assist. Little things like that, you mm -hmm. know, family runs out of food. You know, you have a banana, you know, you sting your hand over a bunch of bananas and bread, food, whatever, and you share. You know, and everybody gets along because we are all here to help each other. But as time has gone by, I have realized that people have more become kind of self-centered. Yeah. I don't want to use the word selfish, they have become more self-centered and they more kind of concentrate on themselves and their immediate circle, mm -hmm. their immediate family or circle of friends, and tend to kind of lock off other people outside of that circle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think that augurs well for the development of Tobago mm -hmm. because, you know, you never can tell. Someone is always in need. True. And, you know, we always have to have that little, you know, something within us yes. to extend a helping hand. To that persons. kindness. Yes. Kindness is so needed. needed. So and needed. We, have, we went through COVID, mm -hmm. right? And I feel <laughs> like, you know, COVID really brought us back to ourselves. There was yeah. a lot of pain in COVID. A lot of people died. A lot of people lost loved ones. But even within that I, I'm seeing that we had some blessings yes. in COVID, yeah. right? People started to be kind to each, each other. other. And that's mm -hmm. one of the, I mean, COVID is when we started to do the hamper drive right. every Christmas, yes. right? Because of that, we saw the need, right? Mm -hmm. That's the Tobago mm -hmm. Writer's Guild guys. We saw the need that people right. would, you know, people mm -hmm. are having to get help. Mm -hmm. to get groceries it's not easy yeah. and i i wonder to myself what have you observed do you think that covid um kind of brought us back together at all to a certain extent mm -hmm. it has kind of made people sit and you know be more introspective because you know you with covid you're kind of you know locked away you you know you are there with your own thoughts so you have more time to think and reflect and i think that has helped us to a certain extent to be more receptive of others and to be more giving as a mm -hmm. people in Tobago because that's how we are yeah we are naturally giving people loving people helpful people yes you know so I don't know why we have digressed so much mm -hmm. from being that type let of me tell people. you Tobago sweet 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 yes. sweet people sweet <laughs> environment sweet wine well it's a little dry today and I'm happy for that and I want to talk yeah. about just for a bit I want to mention, I mean, um, people ask me from time to time, you know, it's Book Club Corner, it's about books. Why are you supporting local wines? Like, what is that about? Let me tell you guys. I have a wine company. Um, I went to open a bank account for my wine company only to be told that there is no category for local winemakers with okay. custom and excise, and therefore you can't even get a license. So therefore you can't open a bank account, right? And I heard, um, you know, some some commentators for the budget yesterday mm -hmm. talking about they are comparing how many businesses are registered and how many of them have accounts. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's quite a lot of us, right? And they assume the reason is that, you know, people just want to be able to keep all their money to themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to pay taxes. 
But you know, we we don't support our local industry, industry enough. We don't support our local people. And I wanted to make sure that while we have a platform for our writers, we bring everybody on board, Together. right? So it's not just about local winemakers because I like, I love local wine, guys. <laughs> not because I just love local wine and I love books, but because we have to support each other. It's part of that kindness tree mm -hmm. that we're talking mm -hmm. about, making sure everybody's okay, mm -hmm. making sure everybody has a space to be able to be seen and to That's be heard scary. and to be promoted, mm -hmm. right? And if I have a platform, you know, um, I'm a first child, so... <laughs> Princess used to say, every time you get up, you know, somebody, bring water for me, bring something. For me. You, you have to bring everybody along. And that's one of the things we love to be good for. Bring a brother or sister along. If you're getting through in life, if you're succeeding, put them on to the game. Bring that's them along good. with you. You're not going to miss out. So cheers and big up. <laughs> cheers, and marie to our local winemakers, <laughs> our local authors, our local businesses, if we don't stick together, we're not going to get through. And before we go, I want to talk lastly about your work in the NGO world. Mm -hmm. You are in three NGOs. Yes. Where do you find the time? <laughs> Ask the person who in five. But we won't get into that today. Right. You're the president of the Rotary Southwest. Yes. You're the secretary of Kiwanis. Mm -hmm. You were the former vice president of the Tobago Writers Guild, mm -hmm. right? And you even filled in as secretary for quite a while. And she's a really good secretary. And you do other work as well. Mm -hmm. Where did you find the impetus? One, where did you tell yourself, I need to serve? I need to be of service? Mm -hmm. Well, coming from an educational background, the name of the game there is service. <laughs> Because once you're in education, you're always serving. You're always serving your stakeholders, your students. Mm -hmm. You are there to work along with your teachers and everything. So when I retired, it just automatically spilled over into, you know, service organizations. Mm. And for me, I just love helping people. It's just yes. in my genes. I think I got it from my parents because my father was the first president of the St. Vincent de Paul, oh. right, that has their branch up at Mason Hall. Right. He actually founded it in Tobago. And I think okay. from that, seeing him go around and, you know, with baskets of food and giving mm -hmm. out to persons on a regular basis. That sort of impacted me as a child. And then my mom became involved in that same service organization. And now my sister is also part of that. Wow. So I think it kind of grew on me and it touched mm -hmm. me in some form or fashion. And, you know, you know, just being home now, you know, I'm retired. I have nothing to do, so I may as well just get up and sew. You have nothing to do. <laughs> she has plenty to do, guys. She is all. Every time I speak to Anne-Marie, and we say, I'm heading out the door. I just came in. <laughs> I have this to do. Anne-Marie, I don't know what your definition of I have nothing to do is, but that is not it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anne-Marie, as a woman leading the charge, mm -hmm. right, as the president of the Rotary Southwest, and a leader in your own right. What would you say if you were to give advice to young women, to the women of Tobago? Um, you know, because we, we have a history of being cheerleaders, right? As they say, always the, the, the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? We have a history of cheering. We always say with the pom pom, so we're never driving the boat, we're never driving the car. What is your take as a leader yourself? for young women and for women in general mm -hmm. to be the drivers? I don't know if one of the factors that kind of keeps women back is fear mm -hmm. or maybe feeling that you're not good enough. But my point is you'll never know if you're not good enough if you never try. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my advice to anybody who finds you know, herself in a position of leadership or who is being called to perform that position or that role, I would say go for it. Give it your best shot. Mm -hmm. You know, entrust it to God, and God will make a way, and he will make everything possible. If I can take my own example as being, you know, current president of the um, Rotary Club of Southwest Tobago, you know, when I was appointed and, you know, all of that, you know, I had initial fear. Yes. I even told them that on the induction night. I had initial fear. Would I feel this group? Would I be able to function? But mm -hmm. I said, look, I'm going into it with an open mind, with God at my side. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And so far, you know, it's been a good experience yes. for me. Yes. So go for it. Just go brave. Give it all you've got. And at the end, you will be able to look back and see the success and reap the rewards. 
I'm very proud of you, if yes, that counts for you. anything, because this woman, she, she is doing the thing, right? <laughs> but I am so proud of you, Anne-Marie, as a woman leading the charge, Thank doing, you. helping, being in NGO work. It's something that we need more of in yes. Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to thank you for being here with us, taking the time out to discuss your work and your poetry. Guys, get this book. And while you're getting the book, get some wine <laughs> from Sweet Hand Wines. You should be reading with wine. It's better, right? It makes reading sweeter. Tobago Imprint, it's an anthology of 26 authors. Anne-Marie Davis is here with us. She's one of those authors. Get this book. It's a great gift for Christmas. It's a great gift for people who are going back to, if they're living overseas. It's a great gift, full stop. And let me tell you, where they go down by Sweet Hand Wines, right opposite um, Tennessee Vaskin and get this exotic fruit blend. It is fantastic. I think this would be probably my top two. I have another one. The Aloe's was really good last year. But this would be one of my top ones, the top recommendations to get. And we want to close off today. Thank you for tuning in with us, guys. Another episode of Book Club Corner. We will be here next week, Wednesday, as we will be every Wednesday. And next week, Wednesday, we will be talking to Cleon McPherson about his work and his writings. So we want to close off. Cheers to you, Anne-Marie. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much Cheers, for Cheers, guys. Me. Thank you for viewing. Thank <laughs> you.